today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I built this dip station attachment for my power rack. I'm giving away my old dip station and if you want to find out the rules of the giveaway you have to watch until the end of the video and you might have a chance to win this dip station built by 16 year old me and um, whenever my channel pops off you'll get to say I won that giveaway from gear and you can um, tag me on your post whenever you have this up at your gym so um, for now I'm going to show you how I built this dip station and at the end of the video, I'll give you the rules for the giveaway. So the first step I'm taking in building this dip station is I'm going to cut a triangle out of this little piece of sheet metal. I don't really know what you'd call this. I guess a sheet metal strip. This one is four inches wide and it's a quarter inch thick. And I'm going to cut a four inch triangle. So I'm going to measure four inches in and then cut across that line and maybe cut two triangles. So yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. So I had some leftover square tubing from the squat rack that I used to build a leg extension machine, which I'll link to up here on the card above. But yeah, since I had some square tubing left over, I'm gonna go ahead and use this stuff to make the dip station attachment. And what I'm doing now is I'm gonna cut out a seven inch piece, and then I'm gonna, go, and then I'm gonna cut out a 20 inch piece. Then after that, I'll cut out two 18 inch pieces of pipe and I have to cut off around six inches of strip from a two inch quarter inch thick strip of um, sheet metal so that's what I'm doing now so as I already mentioned in this project I'll be needing two pieces of square tubing the ones I'm cutting in this clip are 7 inch and 20 inch And in a few seconds, you're gonna see me have an accident. No, not in my pants, but with the grinder. And I'm gonna explain what happened and how you can avoid making the same mistake so you don't hurt yourself. Holy f Um. If you're using a grinder, be careful, cause shit happens, bro. That scared the out of me, bro. So now I'm gonna explain what happened there as I cut it properly. But what happened was, since the cuts were already made, the weight of the metal started to weigh down on itself, and that kind of collapsed and trapped the cutting wheel, and it caused it to flick up and cut my hand. And it didn't cut it too deep, it was only deep enough to where I just put some super glue on it and moved on with the project. But as you can see on my shirt, I have tape on it now. That way I don't have, I don't get little sparks and stuff inside of my shirt. But anyways, it wasn't anything major, it could have been a lot worse. But just a heads up for any of you who decide to try to make this, make sure you cut the thing right or use a bandsaw or just don't use a grinder, use something better. But yeah, this is what I should have done to avoid that whole incident in the first place. So anyways, moving on. I brought out the pipe and I used a roll of toilet paper, the actual cardboard part to draw or to cut out a straight line on the back part of it because it was pretty crooked. So I'm cutting out two pieces of pipe. They're both going to be 18 inches long and these are going to be the actual handlebars. Like I said, you could cut this with a bandsaw or a chop saw, but I just don't have one that cuts straight cuts because I have a chop saw. It's just not very straight. Um, if I run across some money, I'll buy a bandsaw because I like the way those work. So just putting that out there. Anyways, once I had a good straight cut on the back of the pipe, I went ahead and cut out the two 18 inch pieces. So now that I had my two 18 inch pieces of pipe cut out, I used a piece from the back of one of the pipes to trace out exactly where I wanted to put the pipes through. So on that piece of square tubing, I was going to cut out a groove on both sides so I could stick the pipe through there and weld it on. 
So after I cut out the grooves for the 18 inch pieces of pipe, I went ahead and cut out four pieces of two inch flat metal strips. One of the pieces was six inches long and two of the other pieces were four inches long. Once I had all those pieces cut out, I proceeded to cut out a three inch piece of one inch thick bar from an old easy curl bar I had in the gym. Okay, so now I have the plates. What I'm gonna do now is drill a hole through this plate here, the six inch plate. Put that through there. Put that there. So picture this, this is upside down right now. This is what's gonna go into the squat rack. Put that there, put this here, and put that there. Sort of like that. So that's what I'm working on now. This is gonna have to have a one inch hole drilled on it. So that's what I'm getting to right now. So now that I got the hole drilled through, I put a magnet under the bar and put the bar through the hole. And what I'm going to do now is weld it and make sure it's completely squared off. The reason I'm only welding one side and it's the front side is because if you weld on the back side, it won't fit into the squat rack properly. So make sure you pay attention to details like that. So what I'm doing here is I am stacking the two pieces of square tubing on top of each other with the bar and in, going into both of them and I'm clamping it on and I'm welding it on or actually I'm tacking it and after I tack both pieces on I go ahead and flip it on its side and tap the other piece onto that piece there and from here on it's really just a matter of welding everything together and at the very end of it you just spray paint everything. I was a little bit more naive and more retarded, so I kind of didn't do as well of a job as I did on that one. I'm going to put them on the squat rack, both of them. That way you can see exactly what I'm talking about. This is the new dip station. As you can see, it looks a lot more solid, more sturdy, and it has this little triangle here. It's on there a lot tighter. The old one, <laughs> uh, what I don't like about this one is that this isn't a hidden profile thing. The little bar that attaches to the actual squat rack is way up here instead of hidden like in this one. So there's that and then it doesn't have a triangle on the bottom of it like the new one and the welds down here aren't very good. So whenever I hop on this one, it kind of warps down. Watch this. As you can see, it warps down. When you do your dips, it's kind of wobbly. But this one's a lot more solid so it doesn't really warp. So you hop on it, do a dip. As you can see, it's really solid. It doesn't really bend down whenever you do your dips. But I am going to be giving this one away. So the rules for the giveaway are share this video with two people that have a home gym or that have a squat rack that has two inch square tubing and a comment done down below and that will enter you in a giveaway. And in order for me to actually do the giveaway, this video has to hit 100 likes. So make sure you go tell your grandma, go tell your grandpa to go like this video so that you get a chance to win this dip station. These are worth like 70 bucks, so you'd be saving yourself 70 bucks, and you also get the sentimental value of, oh, it was built by Beer. So when the channel blows up, you'll be able to say, I bought this dip station from Beer. But yeah, other than that, thanks for watching. If uh, you have any ideas as to what I should build next, comment them down below, and I'll catch you in the next video.